This is the specialized Turbo Canivo, which I think is one of the most interesting e-bikes on the market today because it's got an awful lot going for it, but it's also quite flawed in some interesting ways as well. While most e-bikes use either a Bosch or a Shimano motor, Specialized developed a motor along with a German company called Bros. This motor is not seen in many other e-bikes and it has two main advantages. Unlike the Bosch motor, it uses a normal size chainring, which means that the suspension kin kinematics aren't quite as compromised to work around the motor. Also, when you're pedaling an e-bike above 25 kilometers an hour, there's no longer any assistance from the motor. And the Bros motor disengages when you're above that speed limit. That means that when you're riding, either with the engine switched off, perhaps because you've run out of battery, or when you're pedaling above that speed limit, maybe pedaling towards a jump, you really notice that there's less drag with this unit than you get with a Bosch motor, for example. The final advantage of this setup is it allows them to shorten the chainstays. I'm usually quite a big fan of relatively long chainstays in normal bikes because it pushes your weight distribution slightly further forward to give you more front wheel traction. But with e-bikes, you don't need that so much because there's so much weight in the middle of the frame pushing down onto the front wheel. Also, a lot of e-bikes have really long chainstays, sort of 470, even 480 millimeters. The Specialized has a much shorter chainstay. It's 445 millimeters. And what that means is it's much easier to manual, lift the front wheel and to bunny hop. The fact that it's easier to lift the front wheel and to lift the whole bike means that it feels much more like a normal bike than most e-bikes. And you're not feeling like 25 kilometers an hour is an upper limit. It's, it's merely the assistance limit and you can push and pedal beyond that a bit more easily than you can with a Bosch motored e-bike. This bike in XL weighs 24.6 kilograms without pedals, which is kind of middle of the road for a long travel e-bike. But despite that heft, it's surprisingly similar to a normal bike to ride dynamically over rough and technical terrain. Another thing I really liked about this bike is the short crank arms. It uses 165 millimeter crank arms, while a lot of e-bikes still use 170 or even 175 millimeter crank arms like you'd find on on most conventional mountain bikes. And what you end up doing on an e-bike is riding up much more technical terrain, much steeper, more awkward climbs. And having those shorter crank arms just allows you to pedal over that rough terrain much more easily. And compared to other bikes I've tested with 170 or 175 crank arms with similar kind of bottom bracket heights, you really notice that you're clipping pedals less, you can pedal more consistently over that rough terrain. The Kinevo has 180 millimeters of suspension travel, front and rear. That's provided by the 2018 version of the RockShox Lyric, which doesn't have quite the same sort of really supple, smooth air spring that the 2019 version has, but it's still one of the best forks out there. The rear suspension is controlled by an Olin's TTX coil shock. There's not a huge amount of progression built into the frame kinematics. And obviously you've got a, a constant spring rate, a linear feel from the coil shock. So that provides a, a very sort of comfortable feeling back end. And I ended up removing all but one of the volume spaces from the fork so that it matched that feel. Uh, I started with two, the front and rear just didn't work together very well. So I ended up making the fork more linear to match the rear. Combined with those 2.8 inch butcher tires, it delivers a very comfortable ride. But while it is comfortable, it doesn't feel particularly responsive. That's partly because of the linear suspension, which doesn't provide a huge amount of support. You also have quite flexible wheels, which you can kind of feel bending a little bit when you push it into a corner very hard. And when you put all these things together, it doesn't feel particularly engaging to ride uh, when you really push it hard. Components I really liked included the specialized own bars, which have a full 800 millimeter width. If you want something narrow, you can always cut them down. But for me, that extra width was really beneficial. I also get on really well with Specialized sit grips and hinge saddle. I find them particularly comfortable. Also from Specialized is the SWAT kit. So you get a water bottle with a tool housed in it. You also get a chain tool housed in the steerer tube. So you always have at least some tools handy on the bike. That little multi-tool doesn't have a lot of the tools that you will likely need. Like for example, it doesn't have an eight millimeter Allen key. 
so it's still worth taking a proper multi-tool for bigger rides. But for smaller rides where you don't want to take a rucksack, it can help get you out of those binds, and so it is nice to have. You get a SRAM 11-speed drivetrain using a GX derailleur, but with a NX cassette, so only 10 to 42 tooth range. But with an e-bike, that's really all the range you need. It's got SRAM's Code R brakes, which have impressed us not only on this bike, but also in other tests. They've got a really nice consistent lever feel. And with the 200mm rotors front and rear on this bike, it's got plenty of power even on an e-bike. The main component that we didn't like was the specialized Command Woo dropper post. The unique thing about this post is that as it rises, the angle of the saddle changes. The idea being that you can have the saddle pointed downwards to give you good support when you're climbing and still have the rear of the saddle pushed out of the way when you're descending. The main problem I found with this was that the actual travel of the telescopic part of the seat post is only 115 millimeters. Now Specialized claim quite rightly that the rear of the saddle moves out of the way by 150 millimeters because of that tilt. And that's good, but the nose of the saddle, because it's pointing, tilting upwards, only moves out of the way by about 80 mil. What I found was that in particularly steep sections, or when you're trying to absorb the takeoff of a jump, it's the nose of the saddle that gets in the way. Another issue I found was that unless you do it the saddle clamp incredibly tight, it is prone to slipping when you ride over a bump seated. The effective seat angle on this bike is about 74 degrees, which isn't the slackest, but there are certainly much steeper options out there nowadays. And compared to bikes with a steeper seat angle, especially combined with that long travel suspension, it does tend to slouch a little bit on the steepest of climbs where e-bikes are meant to excel. What I found was that the front wheel was prone to lifting on those steep climbs, or you had to really hunch over the front to stop the front wheel from going too light. Now, being a tall rider, the saddle is going to be further back for me than it would be for a shorter rider. So this is a problem that shorter riders will experience less. But for me, other e-bikes with steeper seat angles did give me a much more comfortable position on those really steep uh, inclines. So while I'm a fan of the slack head angle, it's about 65 and a half degrees, I did find that the reach could do with being a bit longer. It's about 478 millimeters, according to Specialized, in the extra large. But while it's not the shortest, there are much longer e-bikes, which for my money provide a much more comfortable position, both when climbing and descending. There's a couple of other little niggles as well. For example, the chainstay is unprotected and makes an awful lot of noise from stock. It would be quite easy to tape that up somehow to silence that noise, but you'd really expect a company like Specialized to have that sorted from day one. Also, while the motor is very smooth and it's very quiet, we did find there were times where it was a little bit too laggy. When you're pedaling constantly, it works brilliantly, but if you pause pedaling for a corner or to time your pedals to avoid clipping a rock, when you get back on the power, it takes an awful long time for the motor to start assisting you. And that can be a real problem when you've selected a gear for having the assistance. And then when you no longer have the assistance, it feels like you're pedaling through treacle because the gear is way too big. Now Specialized have an app called Mission Control, which allows you to tailor the amount of support in each mode. And it used to be the case that you could also adjust how quickly the power came on when you started pedaling. But they've currently disabled that feature Specialized say that they will reinstate it again, but for now you can adjust that speed at which the motor kicks in. So for me there are a lot of little niggles with this bike, chiefly the dropper post and the slight lag with the motor. I also didn't get on particularly well with the linear feeling rear suspension and the slightly shorter than some reach in the extra large, but other people might like that a lot more than I do. And having said that, there's an awful lot to like about this bike. In particular, the quiet and relatively low drag motor, and the fact that it's one of the easiest e-bikes to pick up and move about on the trail. If you like this video, don't forget to like or subscribe.